Welcome. Welcome to Athens City Council. Um, it's, it's Monday, May 6th, 2013. We're, we're beginning early tonight because we have uh, two committees that um, have some pressing issues that need to be discussed before the meeting, before the council meeting begins at 730. Um, if we finish early, then um, we will have a break. If not, we'll go right into the next to the meeting. First of all, um, you not, might have noticed that our, our clerk of council is absent tonight. Um, <coughs> she's found something else she'd rather do than be at the council meeting. So um, we have appointed um, Chris Nisley to, to act as our uh, clerk of courts. Clerk of courts. Clerk of council. <laughs> um, and uh, we will move on from there. Uh, first of all, we have a finance and personnel committee. Uh, member nine. Thank you, President Sands. We have. Can you juggle too? Can you juggle? <laughs> I juggle all these things. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I've been working on multitasking for years. Uh, we have four agenda items tonight. Probably a few miscellaneous items. The first one being the water wells repair and rehabilitation, which you may remember a few weeks ago, Council Member Butler passed an ordinance. Um, uh, authorizing the repairs of these wells and authorizing uh, the city to expend $125,000. And what we're needing to do um, this week then is to move forward with the appropriation so that we can spend the money to uh, pay the bill for the water wells repair. Uh, likewise, with Perfection, this is a second agenda item, and Perfection is the company that the City of Athens has been working with for energy efficiency upgrades and improvements. And earlier this year, we had a report on some of the savings that were achieved. Um, what has come to our attention, though, is that the last of the lighting improvements that will be taking place at the community center, and I believe these are located at the pool, um, have lights that have a need for a different ballast so the equipment is not matching and what we'll be needing to do is authorize an additional seven thousand six hundred and forty five dollars for that and there will be an ordinance tonight and what that will do is split out the money to the various uh, departments um, to which that appropriation will be made and although we don't like to see additional expenditures I think if we remember the report earlier in the year um, with the new lighting the, the savings for the city will be substantial so um, under miscellaneous items, I have uh, three other uh, items, and staff uh, may have others, but one was that for the wastewater treatment plan improvements, we have received the loan materials, so we're proceeding with the details on that and making sure all the papers are signed and we're in compliance with what we need to be doing for the next steps for that. Um. Mayor Weil. Couple things. One is that they actually added a invoice to us, showed up with the packet that we need to sign on, for about sixty-five thousand dollars and change. Uh, this has to do with the initiation of the loan, uh, and the way I understand it, with the dialogue, is that that's something that can't be rolled into the loan. So we're going to have to come up with some money for that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they didn't know about this. We talked to Andy and Jessica both, and. It's an initiation fee, and in none of the paperwork or any of the discussions they've had in all this time was that brought up. And it's a percentage of the loan. Um, of so the, you know, $19 million or mm -hmm. $18 million change. Mm -hmm. And essentially, they actually went back higher up to the public works, and they said, oh, this is new and different, and they were kind of surprised, too. But um, I don't know why it, it suddenly popped up as an itemized uh, invoice. Okay. All right, so, so this is a new fee that the <coughs> industry is charging? The public state? works. Uh, what is it, water? Oh, water Development Authority. PCLF, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah, when Jessica said when she called, they said, oh, everybody's surprised at that. <laughs> so. so this is kind of equivalent to points when you buy it. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. They Closing identified cost. overhead expenses, including legal and financial services for the total project cost. So it's a, a new fee, but before it was probably rolled in. Possibly. And that was one of the questions. We for overhead on financial when we get loans. And so 
or like or a just closing maybe, fee. Yeah. So we'll be needing to identify fee. accounts out of which the money can be appropriated this fiscal year in order to pay that. Yeah. And I would assume it will come from our sewer debt fund. So. Okay. Okay. Well. But that's not on our agenda tonight. That's, that's fine, and that's good to know about it, and we're going to be needing to look for the money. I'd just make the comment that if other agencies have noticed the same thing and been surprised, I'd make a comment back to them that City Council, too, was surprised, and perhaps they ought to change their language. And it would be helpful to governing organizations, um, especially since we all just received an article that Auditor Heck forwarded today about how cities are having to do with so much less uh, mm -hmm. local revenues, and things are tight. Or raise their local taxes. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of our sister cities up the road is mm -hmm. laying off fire and police. Uh, so Quite a few. It's a serious thing. So, so it's a lot of money for us to come up with. So I think just adding to that, so when we are looking for the appropriations, when we go for loans for street improvements or whatever big projects we're looking at, is this going to become a fee, a standard fee? That's a good question. It could just be part of this particular water development authority, and therefore it might be how they run their structure. I mean, many of the different departments, uh, you know, branches of government run it a little bit differently. Most of them, of course, it's a, it's a drawdown. We put up the money forward, and then we get it back. Very few of them actually give us money up front. This could just be a new way of Because it's up front cost. money. But not might not be all of them in, in the process. All right. Well, this is based on a federal regulation that actually sets the limit. So if you want to take it all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for the update. <laughs> Although not the <laughs> not really used, but <laughs> Chris, did you have additional items? I just wanted to speak to the two you spoke to. Whenever, you... um, it, go ahead with I, additional comments, please. I just wanted to uh, beseech council to uh, pass under emergency suspension and all those regulations, both the water wells and perfection. Perfection's already occurring right now. This is simply a change order of which the money has been identified on the water wells repair, and I think I stated this before, I deemed it an emergency, you know, six to eight weeks ago. So now that all it was was the appropriation language to appropriate this out of the unappropriated balance hadn't occurred. So okay. To give and, you a and, good and firm council, explanation on why I'm asking. And council has already authorized mm -hmm. the repair of the wells, so, so now we're just designating the money and, and appropriating it. Okay. Thank you for the additional comments. Uh, the other one um, update is to let people know that we are moving forward with the uh, university estates assessment process. And you may remember that we passed the resolution of necessity and that um, following that then letters are mailed to the assessees and owners are given the option for self repairs. We have received several comments back so we will be appointing an equalization assessment board and uh, then will begin the process of um, uh, uh, having that board meet and then at the, uh, probably simultaneously also then bidding for construction uh, for those street improvements. And then the, we'll make post-construction actual cost calculations and then the letters or final bills will be mailed to the assessees. And you may remember that what we're trying to do in this timeline um, the ordinances will not move forward tonight, but we will probably bring them forward when all everything is in place on May 20th, our next regular session of council. And we may be asking uh, for a suspension of several of these ordinances so we can move these, this process forward to get the repairs made and to get this on the tax records uh, before September 9th, I think, is our, our, our deadline. I believe authorization for the loan is necessary. We don't have that in place, or do we? So that's one assessment board, right. equalization board. Um, I think we have two objections right now, last time I told. Correct. We're still waiting for some, I think we have a two week period for everybody to bring in their objections. So we still have uh, one outstanding we haven't heard from one way or the other. So there's, you know, the clock is ticking and we're kind of behind already the, the timetable. Mm -hmm. But the hope is we can get this still lined up and rolling for this year. And uh, the legal counsel for the firm that's been working with the auditor's office, Mr. Schwally, has drafted those ordinances. So they are in the process of being reviewed now. Right. So we have the assessment uh, process. I just dropped that off for Debbie. 
Um, he's working on the loan documents that's already written up with a, a 0.35 interest rate. And then um, the other one will be the authorization to go out to bid and um, you know, enter into contract. But I don't see any reason why they can't all start through at the same time. <coughs> If you remember your infrastructure tour, there was a timeline in that packet of mm -hmm. how things should be laid out. So you can always refer to that. I have a question on the objections, and I'm sure we'll find out, but one of them wasn't the largest property owner, was it? No. Okay. no. They have yet to, to <laughs> they have yet to, essentially they called up and complained, but they did not, uh, to my knowledge, uh, at this point, as of Friday afternoon, they did not actually say, write something out, say we don't like what's going on. Um, and that's it. That's really they have to do a, a written objection. Good to know. Assessment <laughs> equalization boards have some some citizen participation yes. also. Yes, we'll have uh, three citizens. I think is the normal board size. Um, we probably kind of go back. We had one for the, uh, the sidewalks last year. We'll approach some of those members who are comfortable doing it. I think we've actually had some conversations already. They, the best thing to do is get the names nailed down and the meeting time and get the, uh, the parties who are involved you know, there. Because the board members and the equalization board meeting date do need to be included in the ordinance. So we'll need to have that moving forward. And I think we have two of the three who have agreed um, to serve on the board right now. So we, need, we will need one more person. Any other comments or questions about University of State's assessment process? Okay. Else for this one? And Auditor Heck notified us today, this is another miscellaneous item, but it's a very important one, is that the auditors will be in the city building reviewing uh, the city's financial records. And uh, so I know we're making room for them and making staff um, available and accessible. And, and if I'm remembering correctly, the past, at least the past two audits we've gone through, there have not been any um, what we call management notes or citations. There have been some recommendations. But we no had one last time. Uh, it had to do with parking enforcement and the money collection. It's always one of the main things they look at. And um, as it turned out, the records that um, were being kept by the person in charge of that were um, like less than what we were actually bringing in. So it wasn't a matter of anybody taking money, but um, the process is sort of complicated. And um, so we've been working on that since the, the last audit. But that was the only comment. Yes, in this management letter and the year before, we didn't have anything. And of course, two years before that, it was only one thing in each one that related to a, a, another uh, department other than mine. But, uh, no, we have we do pretty good with our audits, but it's still a little bit nerve wracking when they when they come on site. So this they'll be in here May 15th through the 17th for three days, and then they'll probably come back after a week or two. Our audits do this date by June 30th. Okay. Okay. And those are the items I have, unless we have additional items from anybody. I don't have any. Any other staff members? Okay. If we move, move on to committee. I, I do have one item. Um, and it's something that's on the agenda tonight. It's the street paving and repairs. Uh, we put in, in the ordinance for tonight, we put in the dollar values that we discussed in committee. I think that we should increase it. And so um, it's, it is a, it's a $39,000 decrease from what we spent on our annual paving budget last year. And I would like uh, us to bring that up to the same level as last year. Um, so I, I may propose an amendment as we read that ordinance, uh, unless there's a good reason why we can't afford to do that out of our street budget. That would be my, that would be my main concern, is are there other demands on that, you know, the street fund? Well, there are demands on the street fund, and you'll see when um, Michelle goes to introduce the Columbus Road Lancaster Street project, what we'll be pulling from street on that um, between basically street re rehab almost five hundred thousand dollars because the majority of that is paving. And I don't know; I'd have to defer to the auditor to look at how much more anticipated re revenue is uh, expected to come in this year in order to cover. You're saying thirty-nine thousand. That's the change from what we're proposing uh, compared to last year. Just be advised that we may be coming back to you for additional money for street operations later in the year. So. 
And then that would come out of general operating funds. May have which to. Might have to. And um, I would. So I would suggest we've run the numbers currently the way they are. If we need to come back, we can do that. If it looks like we need to do that or, I mean. Well, you're, we're going to put out a bid and they'll have an engineer's estimate based right. on what the engineers provided. And this does change that. So, I mean, there's some change orders can be done in certain, to, up to a certain amount of percentage. But, uh. uh, Council Member Fall. I, I, I would rather have the finance and other people look at it before we introduce it as an amendment. It can be you know, introduced as an amendment, but I'm not comfortable saying, oh, 39, we just were hit with this other, you know, big 63 bill. 63 there, yeah. right? I'm and I'm not, in, I'm not comfortable just doing 65. it on a spur of the moment sort mm -hmm. of thing without having some investigation. I mean, we have much larger projects this year, Richland Avenue, you know, Lancaster. And so I think that we need to make sure that we are covering everything and that a committee looks at it before we start amending it. We can also amend it later, a later date. So, sounds like that might be a reasonable compromise because what it's doing is, you know, respecting your interest and in mm -hmm. keeping that. I noticed from last week's minutes that your your interest that we not neglect that area of infrastructure, but it also gives time for staff input to make sure that we've got the adequate resources. No, I'm just going to say that Member Paul was going to talk to us about it pretty large um, street improvement um, It's going to take up more than 39,000. Sure. Sure. If we're not asking to pass this under suspension tonight, I will um, give it a couple weeks and see where the numbers are then and, and see if it's something I still think we, we can afford. I guess I would just advise that um, because if, if it reads for the first time this evening, then it won't read for a second time until the 20th. And if it has to be modified at that time, just to try to be aware that there may, again, need some sort of suspension emergency or to meet Andy's schedule to have paving done this year. So. Maybe as a whole. Person in charge? I'd like to start on um, okay. following up to um, last Wednesday. Many of you may have seen in the, in the news that there were several state legislators that proposed legislation um, to ban in class two injection wells in the state of Ohio. And as a follow up to that, for many of you that have been following, you know, early um, last year, we updated our wellhead protection plan and we've sent many resolutions to the state regarding our concerns with industrial waste and that being in our uh, in our wellheads or whatever. And so I wanted to um, propose tonight that we send a resolution back up to Columbus stating our support for um, the legislators who have proposed this type of ban. And I just wanted to make so the public's a little bit aware, um, just give you a few numbers and a few ideas. Um, from the um, <clears throat> winter meeting, of the Ohio Oil and Gas Association. They notified uh, folks that were there that in 2012 there are 178 active injection wells in the state of Ohio. And you may say, why Athens? Well, because the water everywhere affects all of us. That's how I kind of look at that. And um, we may only have, what do we have, several here in our county, but there are many of them. So 178, they accepted 13,846,657 barrels of brine and liquid waste. So near 14 million gallons was accepted in 2012. So what do we know about that waste? Well, we know that there are undisclosed highly toxic chemicals, benzene, mercury, arsenic, and radioactive radium, which is the backflow that comes up. So um, in support of that legislation that was introduced last Wednesday, um, I'm suggesting that we as a council again put together, I have an ordinance I can, or a resolution, I can read it now or read it 
after this meeting ends, um, that we continue to uh, suggest to our legislators in Columbus that uh, we are very concerned about our water, our safe drinking water, and that um, we know that the industry is exempt from federal hazardous waste regulations. We all know that. And uh, many of the class two wells as well are, are old wells that are not even up to current standards. So I, we know that <coughs> in relation to one located here in Athens County that has been up for discussion and there has been quite a bit of um, controversy over. So I'm suggesting to our council tonight that we put forward this resolution. The resolution is on our agenda. It is? Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you haven't read it, I mean, I, I encourage you to read it, or I can read it now and then we can just vote when we come forward. It's whatever, however you want me to do it. I suggest that we wait till that time. Keep it fresh in my mind. I would add one other thing in our resolution because we in the city of Athens have pretty much said we do not want any injection wells. Folks need to realize there's several levels of injection wells. Class one, which is where this type of waste should be should be placed, and that's what they're trying to push in Columbus as well. But we don't have any, we, we aren't wanting any injection wells. So when I read this later, um, it just says supporting legislation to enact a statewide ban on underground injection wells. We don't, we're not going to get into the semantics of that. We're just saying that injection wells generally are not healthy for any of us. You can read that. <laughs> No. Oh. <laughs> the actual gallons would be 581,559,594. Because she said barrels, right? She said I barrels. I said barrels. How many 42. gallons in a barrel? 50? 42. 42. Okay. I want to speak about the um, easement. The right of way easement. Um, the the uh, city administration has put forward. Um, a request to grant a public right of way, a simple easement, utility easement, utility easement, uh, utility easement. Um, and this has to do with the um, work for the wastewater treatment plant improvements. Um, and we have, it's a, a general AEP um, um, utility easement that is located over by the the wastewater utility. And we, in our packet, we do have a picture, and um, the general contract that will be signed. Essentially, this, if I understand correctly, is that there is an easement going to the water wastewater treatment plant already. But since we're, we're reconstructing Expanding and moving, it, it, it has to shift a little bit. It has to shift. And so, they want an official documentation that's happening. Yep. Yeah. Oh. So, and I, I, I suggest this probably is not the first sort of housekeeping thing that we're going to be doing with the wastewater treatment plant. There probably may be other things. So I think that this could be under housekeeping for the wastewater and it doesn't cost any money so it's and I would request again if we could suspend and pass this because everything is critical in this wastewater treatment plant in terms of timing and any delays that we would encounter are sure to run up costs and, and so. So I will suspend that this evening okay a grant for hiring police officers there was some discussion of this, if this is the COPS FAST grant. I, I think we went back and forth at the financial committee, finance committee level. I think we're going to, with, this is just a, an application, an ABLS an application. Um, I believe the cutoff is, what, the 22nd of, yeah. um, of this month. So probably we might want to suspend rules on that. I think we're talking about one position. Right. I believe um, Council Member Patterson was going to speak to us this evening. Okay. I'll let you do it then. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> I've been rehearsing all night. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> to give a little bit of background, again, this is a chief file has come forward with a, with a grant application that Department of Justice, um, and it's a granting mechanism in which a, an officer can be hired on to a police force, either at the state or at the local uh, law enforcement level. Um, a little bit of background, um, the staffing ordinance uh, 
for the police department here in Athens changed in 2010 from 28 to 25 officers, 18 of which are officers. Again, we have a captain, a, uh, a chief, a captain, and five lieutenants. Um, and not until this May will the police department here in Athens finally be up to full strength. However, uh, there is a caveat with that, and that is that there's currently four officers that are eligible for retirement, and by the end of the year, there will be an additional three, so it could be seven total. Um, retirement, um, the, uh, the time frame in which someone has to announce their retirement is roughly 60 days, so um, I, you know it's probably critical that this grant go forward. And again, it is just that, a grant. It's uh, a 75-25 um, split in terms of the funding for this. It's a three-year grant with a fourth year in which the city would incur um, the full amount to staff that particular position. Um, but I think that this is, uh, once again, um, a, a grant that, that we should go after uh, that should be looked at to try to increase the staffing for Athens Police Department. Part of it, again, is lag time for training a new officer that, that comes in. So we, would, we might be up to staffing levels at one point, but we really don't have them ready to be on the street. Uh, this is fairly competitive, so the chance of getting it is, you know, there's, we're competing against other uh, cities that actually had a, a substantial loss in staffing. And, uh, and so there's, you know, there's a way, I, the way we understand it is that there's a way to, waiting in this competition of how, how the replacements, whether increase or decrease, are trying to try bring, bring back up to previous levels. So there's a lot of little moving parts on it. It's a monster grant, but uh, so it's not a lot of money, but it is a lot of work. The suspension is to allow you to make that application. In time, yes. If that's okay with you guys. Member Butler? I just briefly wanted to express my support for our pursuit of this. I know during the Clinton administration, I've spoke with Chief Pyle in the past about this, that the city was the recipient of, of grant officers that was uh, supported from the federal level. And those particular officers at the time specialized in uh, domestic violence, crisis control, um, response and and the city benefited immensely from that so I, again I think if we're able to pursue this I want to voice my support okay. uh, moving on member Pappy is going to talk to us about Columbus Lancaster Street so on everybody's mind is the uh, condition of our roads and sidewalks, and sidewalks. So um, we need to talk a little bit about, um, let me find it, the Columbus Road, which is a major entry to our city. We've been discussing it now for some time, and uh, we've put the numbers together. And um, so what we're looking to do is do the um, authorization for the bid, the bidding, authorize the money for that process. And um, we intend to use state capital improvements and local transportation improvement program, our issue one funding, and CDBG uh, funding. Um, and then we'll need to look at local funds to complete the pavement, curb, sidewalk, drainage, water and sewer improvements to um, the Columbus Road Lancaster corridor. So I don't think. No one has any questions about that, or do you have any questions about that? So we'll talk about the, the money and what funds. So what we're looking, uh, what we're asking then is for the different funds to be appropriated. So um, $68,100 coming out of the CDBG fund, 248, and um, TC 500, then uh, $492,900 out of the street rehab fund, which kind of goes back to our earlier conversation, um, $400,000 from issue one funds, $220,000 out of the water fund. $15,000 out of the stormwater fund, $45,000 out of the sewer debt fund. So we'd be transferring, and that would, uh, the total appropriations end up, we have that on here, don't we? Yeah, it's, uh, section five, second sentence in, I believe. Third, first sentence. Yes. 
So it's uh, 1341000 If I may, I, I believe there's a typo because my um, correspondence with Andy shows 145000 from the sanitary sewer. Well, Did this is that? all, okay. um, you know, bookkeeping stuff. Okay. There isn't $145,000 in there to appropriate. <laughs> so um, they're appropriating in Section 2 only $45,000 right in the water debt fund or sewer debt fund which we don't spend money for projects out of a debt fund so that money is appropriated then it's going to be transferred into the sewer fund and then in section five one hundred and forty five thousand will be appropriated and, and it does say that in section five yeah it, it's a, a little bit complicated but it's a bookkeeping thing um, as some of you know several years ago we started putting any, just to put it simply, any extra money we had in the sewer debt fund and not putting all of our receipts into um, the sewer fund because we do have still quite a few uh, sewer loans um, hanging out there. And um, so, but now we're at a point where we have extra money in there. And it's not an issue at all for them to transfer $45,000 out for operating um, because they do need it. One other thing I'd like to comment on is that 68100 and the 400000 are both grants that um, Andy and Jessica have secured for the city. CDBG is the formula money they use, and the other one's the issue one from the State Public Works Commission, uh, which is a competitive, and uh, they worked it up so the numbers were good to, to get that. So, and that's almost two-thirds of what the entire pro so we were able to get grants for a good portion of this construction which again is an entrance to the city and we've talked about it for some time that 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 entrance needs to be improved mm -hmm. thank you and to to add including a discussion I had with with um, Andy Stone on Thursday morning I believe I had asked a little bit about this particular project too and he uh, acknowledged that there'll be some beautification efforts um, with this. I think there'll be a, uh, going down Columbus Road, there'll be a, a center island with um, low trees being planted, smaller trees um, in that space. It'll be bike friendly, is my understanding as well, too. There'll be uh, paint for bicycle um, pathways. So I think there's a real mindfulness here, again, not only addressing the streets, but also what's below, because something that was discussed during the tour, my understanding, again, is not just what's up above, but what's below. So there's infrastructure needs that will also be enhanced during this project. Thank you. So there will be a public information meeting, Correct. just so everybody knows. Uh, that is scheduled for 5-21, uh, May 21st, from 3 to 6 p.m., in Suite 103, 86 Columbus Road in that office building where people can come and see the design and discuss mm -hmm. what if they'd act, like to add or whatever. But it's a way to discuss um, um, the plans for Columbus Road in Lancaster. So that would be an important piece to all of this as well. Yeah, it's more informational. There won't be any real formal presentation, just the, the layout of design that's there. Uh, anytime between 3 and 6, just come on in and check it out. There will be sidewalk repairs with this, so there will be indeed, you know, the assessments going forward for where those are. And on the trees, we had a request from the fire chief today and also uh, from uh, the engineer's view. They're going to be looking at what can be placed in the median to not okay. obstruct view, depending upon what type of vehicle you're driving. So, But there'll be something green. Good. <laughs> Um, I'd like to point out that um, once again that the city engineer's office have done a really good job gaining grants. I mean we have talked about this corridor. It's an entrance to the city. It's an area that's ripe for redevelopment and more economic development but people want you know it's a corridor that's important to get up to snuff and having two-thirds of the project um, for grants we probably would not be able to do it. I mean, we, it's just that that's the reality with our finances is that we can't do everything all over the city and we have to make priorities and sometimes those priorities are driven by economic development, grant availability and need and so we just, that's 
it would be nice to be able to pave everything, but you know, city streets don't have as much grant availability to be truthful. So I'd just like to commend the public, Andy and Jessica, for writing all those grants. They're not the easiest thing. And that right now they're pursuing the rich and south. Right, as which is going to be a whole nother economic multi-million dollar here. project. Yes. So. I was just going to add, and perhaps the uh, administration could clarify, I think we're saving money as well by doing design in-house. This is something that uh, Andy and Jessica took upon themselves, correct? Correct. But I would say that that's uh, it's taken up quite a bit of their time, and, and uh, but they, they are completing that. So. It's a balancing act. Yeah. I would also say in terms of uh, doubling up on the economic, this is Ward 3, and I speak to many of the businesses there on Columbus Road, and they're thrilled. They're, they're ready for this to happen, everyone who speaks to any of those business owners. And, you know, there's quite a lot of uh, empty land down there for sale. And um, I think once the street is improved and the interest is improved, hopefully that will be another area for growth for the business community in Athens. I'd like to echo what uh, Councilmember Pavi was just saying, but from a citywide perspective, same thing. We're talking about major corridors, uh, the mm -hmm. gateways to the city, mm -hmm. and we're seeing slope, but we're seeing improvements in all of our major gateways, which, again, um, and to echo what Member Paul was saying, it's, it's the grants and the grantsmanship that we're seeing. Um, you know, to, I, I believe we have a proven track record of being able to go after some of these, these dollars. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Oxbow Bridge also had some a grant Quite a component. Mm -hmm. um, the so there's a number of them. Um, and, uh, and, and I know that once you get to Lancaster Street, that's been a large concern for many. We've heard a lot about it in this election cycle with the campaigning on the sidewalks on Lancaster. And uh, many of those, almost all the sidewalks need to be improved as well as the curb there. And um, that's going to be an effort and an assessment effort. And we hope everybody sees the value of, um, you know, working to improve that. Because, again, that is part of the entrance to the city. And uh, so we hope that we can get everybody on board, or most people on board with that. Do we have any miscellaneous? Um, well, uh, just to chime in one more time here, the Oxbow realized we had local credit for doing the Carriage Hill Bridge, if you remember, Carriage Hill Road Bridge. And this is a multi-year project to say, okay, we're going to take the credit for one construction and, and move it over to the next one. Be aware, of course, that the Oxbow is being constructed, so therefore that the track, you know, when you talk about how thrilled the Columbus Road people are, there's going to be a point they're not going to be too thr <laughs> so thrilled when the construction is flying. I think people are dull enough to understand that. Yes, okay. there'll be some delays. And uh, we're aware that, of course, 56 at Margaret Creek Bridge is going to be done sometime this summer, too. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of projects going on. Um, the only other miscellaneous, since you council the whole, um, I thought I'd bring up, and I passed you uh, the sheet of the historic preservation roster for the board. Um, if I look at the ordinance, I think I have 60 days to fill it. Um, depending on whether you say 60 days stays to f goes into effect or when it's signed, it's getting close to that. And I, I got about 10 people who requested. Um, I haven't talked to all of them. I assume that they are interested enough to, uh, to sit on the board. Uh, so you have a list there. Um, you can approve it tonight uh, at regular session or to your choice. Um, if you have questions, the uh, email is there, so you can always hold off if you wish. Um, again, it's, it's not my forte of historic preservation. Uh, my only caveat, of course, is that uh, the preservation board and what they do should be listening to the people they affect. I think that was one of the considerations for the Near East Side uh, neighbors when they made that a registered district. Is, if you put anything, impose anything, you better have somebody on, you know, who lives in there, who's listening, or a, a, a board that's willing to participate in a dialogue. And that's my only caveat with that. And that's all I really have. Super safety director. No, we just keep reminding everybody that the Oxbow Bridge is closed. We'll Bridge is closed. About we'll talk about that when we get before we leave here. Okay, um, we are. Uh, into the time period for, for our committee for our council meeting so we will establish a quorum all members are present uh, we've already appointed uh, member nisley as our acting clerk we have two sets of minutes uh, from the regular session 
held April 1st, 2013, and the regular session held April 15th, 2013. Do we have a motion to accept those minutes? I move that we accept the minutes. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Those opposed, same sign. We have accepted those two sets of uh, minutes. Um, communications from elected officials? Um, just a few things. Uh, the Oxbow Bridge is being construction, <laughs> so you'll be able to take that road, just in case you didn't notice. Um, the, again, the informational meeting for the Columbus and Lancaster one will be 21st of May uh, on uh, 86 Columbus Road, Suite 103, between 6 and 3. Uh, the chimney repairs, they're going to start up next week. That's the chimneys on this side of the building, I believe, and then that side of the building. So uh, getting around the city hall may be a little bit more difficult. Just watch out for flying bricks, I imagine. Um, and I think there's going to be some kind of, uh, it says bucket brigade. I've been invited to some kind of air testing, community air testing system for the Athens County Frac Action Network. They're going to train people how to test the air quality in locations near you. So that will be this Friday. I think there's a meeting at 12, but I see this one's for training between 6 and 8. 12.30 to 2, there's a press conference for the... Okay, and yeah. panel discussions. And right, panel. Table. Okay, so I, I'm aware of many things are happening here. And that's all I have, unless I miss something. Did I miss something? Okay. Auditor Yes, I would like to give an update on our CCA program uh, for collecting delinquent taxes for us. Um, so far, uh, CCA has brought in about $100,000. Uh, In-house, we've collected about $70,000. That is from uh, the program asked for um, tax information from 2006 through 2010. And so once people found out they owed taxes, then uh, quite a few of them came forward and paid their 11 and 12 taxes. So that's why that was collected in-house, not through CCA. And we are getting ready to, and of course there's still probably 100,000 uh, still billed out there. We're getting ready to send out second letters, and um, Tina has asked for that draft so she can review it before it goes out. And um, evidently uh, they've never dealt with a city like Athens, but um, we keep telling them, you know. Yeah. You mean where people pay their taxes? No, quickly, no, where people are concerned about being concerned polite. about every little thing. Oh, no. okay. people don't complain when they get a tax letter. Most people are, if you owe your taxes, you pay. Not in Athens, <laughs> so that's okay. So we just have to put the kid gloves on. And um, uh, one thing I might add to that is we did close our, our month uh, for tax, like we do all our other financial reports for April, and um, without this additional money that we brought in, our tax collections would be down for this year. Hmm. Um, and that's uh, taking into account that April is our big tax collection month. So um, we'll be watching that pretty closely throughout the rest of the year. Uh, Kathy, if I remember the CCA, their surcharge is about 5%. Yes, so no more than 5% no is 5 what so. it will be. But I imagine that it, it, it will be 5% for us because we sent acknowledgement letters and, you know, some of the other things we're asking them to do, so. Okay. Which, you know, these are people we would never have found otherwise. Member Um I'd like to announce the, um, the um, Environmental and Sustainability Commission. We've had somebody who couldn't continue on the commission, so we have one opening for people who would like to volunteer. Um, just let um, Debbie Walker know, the clerk of council, and, uh, and we will get back to you. Thank you. Do you know, can you tell us when meetings are? Um, presently, they're the first Wednesday of the month, but it seems that um, with new people it may change because I think that that was being driven by the person who had to resign. So. Um. We have received a request for a um, for a new liquor permit um, to sell beer and wine um, at the Big Lot store on East State Street. Um, this um, is open for for um, comments through June third. So, if anybody has comments about this particular permit, they can uh, go through us and or directly to the 
is a permit people. And, and so this is a new permit? They don't this, have a permit right they're now? They're not, exactly, and they're not, they're not uh, utilizing one that is, is uh, going out of business. It's, it's a not a transfer? Any. Not a transfer. This is a carryout? Yes. Big Lots is not normally known for having liquor at other... It's not liquor, it's... Well, beer and beer wine. And wine. Yeah. Alcoholic beverages. It's okay. just another proliferation, it seems. So it's not a transfer. So they want to basically open a new business, a new addition to their business, their current business. They do have food in there. They have applied for an for open license, um, and um, the comment period runs through June the third of this year. Um, after which, uh, the decision will be made. I was the impression we were one short for carryouts, but I haven't checked the quotas lately in the past six or seven months. So that's probably what they're pulling is the last is the one. Or again, it's one for every thousand, I believe. It's a quota for carryouts. Oh, one for every thousand citizens. Yeah, I think it's one for every two thousand for the uh, the actual D licenses, hmm. and then even then there's some off quota. Is that citizens over twenty one? No, just citizens. Just citizens. Mm -hmm. yeah. They do the census. And how do they do our census with the students yeah. here or the students not here? The census here. is done yeah. April here. 1st, here. isn't here. it? So they're here. So our census is 23,000. Yeah. 23.8 as of 2010. Not that many. And um, we have a letter that uh, has come to our clerk of council. Um, the, uh, our auditor had spoken before to... Um, her concerns about the Municipal Income Tax Uniformity Act, uh, which uh, could lead to um, decreased tax income for, for cities. And so we have a, a letter here from um, State Representative Cheryl Grossman, who is the majority of WIP in, in the um, state Senate, uh, state house, state house. And so um, copies can be made available. Um, I don't I'll know just whether you have a clarify a little bit. She is the sponsor of that bill uh, in support of that. She's from Grove City. And um, just to give you a little more information about what's going on, last Wednesday I went to the state house with Tina to listen to, um, to the hearings uh, of people. The week before it was people in... Uh, for the bill, and last week they had two days of hearings uh, for opponents, and um, it's a pretty interesting process. Tina is planning to testify this week, um, Wednesday, herself up there, and um, so that's where we are. We, um, there's no way, the way the bill is written, that we won't lose money, and we're, we're projecting about 200000 for our city. So... Um, and it's not that we're opposed to uniformity. I think everybody should know that. Um, but it, it shouldn't cost everybody, everybody money. There are a couple things that we're, I mean, we all know about the NOL, and that's probably going to go through, the net operating loss carry forward. We don't have that anymore since, I don't know, 2003 or five. Um, there will undoubtedly be one in there, and that will cost us money. However, um, the other ones that are unnecessary in our mind is the throwback, people who do a lot of internet sales here in the city, and you'd be surprised um, that uh, that money won't come back to us then either as a, as a business tax. And the other one that Tina's concerned about is um, the 12-day rule, that they want to expand it to 20, which um, <coughs> you know, is a whole month of, of actual work days. But the problem is the way it's written, um, they won't now. Once they hit the 12th day, then we go back and collect the taxes from day one. Now it's, they don't start paying until the 21st day. So they come and work here for free. And um, because they're not working in their, their home site, then they don't have to pay taxes there either. So basically it's, it's a carve out for business people who send people uh, around to other cities. And they just won't end up paying taxes for a month. 
We so. know that's oil and gas industry too, related. Sure. There's a lot of things that come and go in Athens that will be under a month, and you know you can bet that businesses that are close to that will make sure they don't go over, switch their employees out, mm -hmm. um, things like that. So, so those are the ones we're most concerned about. Any other? Um, oh, just a quick question. So, is passage of that bill imminent? Or no, no, they're still, still working on still it. Still in negotiations, and Ohio Municipal League is still working. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. The With problem the is um, the bill that they have introduced is a brand new bill, tax bill. They did not take the current tax code and amend it, so it's um, it's about five times longer than the the one that's on the books now, and it's uh, it, it's really compu confusing and complex and contradictory in a couple spots. So um, the OML is writing their own bill, which is actually uh, amending the, the tax code as it is, instead of trying to start from scratch and get it right. So. Well, we are um, happy and proud of Tina going to mm -hmm. test. Yeah, platform. she's done an excellent job. Mm -hmm. She really has. And um, yeah, the chair of the House Ways and Means Committee is, you know, Said, where have you been the other day when we saw him? So yeah, because she she's worked really hard to come up with accurate figures to show how much we would actually lose. And um, yeah, if she if anybody knows their tax information, it's Tina. So yeah, she's doing a great job representing us and taxpayers all over the state. Any other elected officials? Anything to say? I'm sorry. No report. I just slid in here. Okay. <laughs> Okay, then we're going to move on to third reading. Ordinances for third reading. Ordinance 3213, an ordinance closing a portion of Court Street between State and Carpenter on Saturday, June 29, 2013, from 10 a.m. to midnight for Ohio Brew, Ohio Brew Week. Introduced by Councilmember Gosney. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to move adoption of Ordinance 3213. Second. And this uh, ordinance, we've, the city has emptied out a little bit, but we're going to make sure that over the summer people have lots of fun and exciting things to do. And so we hear about a few of those events tonight. Now, this is the first one, and it's uh, our annual Ohio Brew Week, uh, somewhat of a, a festival that attracts people from around the state and, and around the country to Athens during the summer. This year it's scheduled for June 29th from 10 a.m. or starting. This is the street closing. would start at 10 a.m. and go uh, through midnight. We have a couple changes from previous years. The stage is proposed to be at the lower end of Court Street, uh, the north end. And we're also, we have amended it to include, as you'll recall, a section of uh, State Street in front of uh, the Passion Works building for an outdoor open air uh, art market or uh, display. I'm not exactly sure the details of that, but we'll have some, some art events going on there uh, during the, during the um, final night of Brew Week. And that's all I have on it. Do you have any comments? Okay. All those in favor of Ordinance 3213 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Ordinance 3213 is accepted. Ordinance 3313, an ordinance declaring certain equipment no longer needed for a municipal purpose and declaring an emergency. Again. Councilmember Gosney. Thank you, Mr. President. I move adoption of Ordinance 3313. Second. Uh, this ordinance is to allow the city to get rid of some uh, old equipment that we don't need, uh, including a paint machine from 1983 that doesn't paint lines so well anymore, a uh, Dodge, I believe a 97 Dodge truck, um, and additionally, some, the pews at Arts West. Uh, the city is revamping the, the seating at Arts West and we're looking to find good homes for the, the wooden pews that are existing there. Comments? All those in favor of Ordinance 3313 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same time. This ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 3813. An ordinance closing a portion of Court Street on Friday, June 7th and July 26th, and a portion of Union Street on September 13th, 2013, for a cruise-in. 
Member Gosman. Thank you. I move adoption of Ordinance 3813. Second. And as, as it says in the title, there are uh, three cruisins that we would like to allow this uh, summer and into the fall uh, in the city. Uh, one will be June 7th, another July 26th, and then the last one would be held uh, September 13th. Um, one will be on, the first two will be on Port Street, and the third will be on uh, Union Street. And these are, we do these annually, a pretty low-key event, uh, some nice, nice classic cars uh, that you can find there. I think the Union Street is a... Uh Trying something new. That's right. Yeah. Any comments? All those in favor of Ordinance 3813 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ordinance is adopted. And Ordinance 3913, an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code, Title 7, Section 7.05.26B1. City garage metered parking rates and regulations on Saturday, June 29th, 2013, from 10 a.m. to midnight for the Ohio Green Festival. Member Gosney. Thank you. I move adoption of Ordinance 3913. Second. And this is uh, simply to provide free parking uh, to those that will be in Uptown Athens uh, for the festivities of Ohio Brew Week on June 29th. Comments? All those in favor of Ordinance 3913 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. This ordinance is adopted. We have one ordinance for second reading. Ordinance 4413, an ordinance granting a revocable license to Gator Guys LLC to permit a balcony at 63 North Court Street that will encroach over and upon the public right of way. Member Gosney. I don't have anything to add at second reading. Um, it seems at this point that maybe um, this ordinance is not really um, because the balcony has now been made. That it's. Um, I'm concerned that the balcony was constructed before the ordinance went through, because that negates any of the concerns or any of the other further discussions that could have occurred I know that people are still upset about the balcony and um, I don't think that that's good governance and so that's just my two cents I have heard a huge amount from people about this the fact that somebody just went and did something before it was actually law I also have heard the same and um, they feel like everyone else has to jump through the hoops and do and follow the rules. And so I concur. I've heard the same. Mayor, um, I hesitate to weigh in on, on the history uh, of some of this, but if I remember, there was a, a, another occasion where a, a developer was actually building apartments on Court Street, uh, was, uh, n did not have the adequate parking for that place, um, I think uh, Steve Pearson, the code enforcement at the time, took it to uh, our prosecutor, and I think the ruling at that time was is they could build it, but they couldn't occupy it. Uh, in other words, the capability of building those apartments, uh, even though they were not sanctioned or permitted, et cetera, et cetera, was allowed, but actual occupancy was not, uh, was not be able to be done. So technically, you could build a balcony, and the um, permit for occupancy would be negated at that time. Um, and, uh, so, but again, that's, so when you talk about precedence, I think it's been done before. Mm -hmm. It's been, it was a long time ago, and uh, I hate to draw my history like that because um, I was aware of it, I followed it, but uh, you know how those things you, you know, history has a way of clouding things over. So just so you know that has been discussed before at one time. I'm just, I'm concerned because it's kind of the do it and then, uh, you know, apologize later. And that's just, it's not planning and these sort of um, things that have to do with public entities and public right-of-ways and public property um, can take, you know, some time. And obviously, this one has taken longer than average, but I think that we need to do it right and cross all the T's. And it's not, you know, I understand that the 
you know, it needed to be done because there was some kind of <coughs> state inspection, but because it would have been much better to have um, a timeline provided by the building people, um, by the, the landowners, saying, you know, our, one of our important dates is this date. We could have had a special session or something to discuss it, to move it along a lot forward, but this was out of the blue. I mean, it's like, oh, I need the inspection tomorrow, so you need to get it done today. That's, it's not good, that's not good governance. So I just hope that this isn't a precedence for, you know, in the future somebody says, oh, well, we needed to do it, and then you guys need to sign off on it, because that's just, I don't think that that's how a, a city should run. So, uh, and, you know, it's, it's done. You know, maybe we should suspend the ordinance tonight and just get it over with. I don't know. I don't hear any motion to, to suspend or amend. Well, it's kind of past amending, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Wait a second. You still, it's still your right of way. I mean, if this got voted down two weeks from now, then, you know, the balcony is illegal. I mean, it's not like it's, it's a done deal here. I mean, somebody can get ahead of that, but at their own peril. Right. Um, and I think the interpretation at the point, uh, and again, this is just my memory of the conversations going on in committee, is that the three foot seemed to be a compromise out there, which is why it moved forward. Uh, I know some concerns of council members in terms of not going through committee a second time or, or so, but, uh, and again, this is all your bailiwick. Right away is yours. Okay, so. Um. I, w I would suggest that we still have as much flexibility as we had a month or two or three months ago uh, in how we deal with this. And if you look at the progression of the construction on that building, it was a stepwise process to take what extended probably 10 or 11 feet out over the sidewalk to, to cut that back to what is existing now. And if, I, I certainly hope this council allows uh, the three foot balcony, but if for some reason we were not to approve that, then I, I would assume the city would take every move it would to make sure that was cut back to, to something that was acceptable to uh, city administration. Okay. I'm ready to move on. I'm sorry, property owner, you want to come up and talk? <laughs> Please uh, introduce yourself first, and there should be a, I hope there's a piece of paper to sign in on. Looks like All right. Good evening. Here, you know. My name's Brian Wharton, and uh, just wanted to clarify that uh, in no way is this an act of defiance towards the city. Um, had we chose to take that approach, then, I mean, we've been trying to compromise. We've reached out. Uh, we've tried to work with. Certainly, I've done everything in my power to try to get the process Moving on, we started last October. Um, it's now May, obviously, and uh, quite a process to get a balcony. And even the um, strongest opponents uh, have suggested that three feet is an acceptable compromise. So we are merely right now just optimistic that we will be given uh, the revocable license. There's no one that's occupied the balcony, no one will occupy the balcony. We understand that we are still asking for a revocable license and uh, should we not receive it, then we'll have to uh, pull it back to whatever uh, is deemed acceptable. So again, it, it's not an act of defiance. Certainly it's a visible thing, but it's the, it was a very, very last step in completing uh, this renovation that I think has been a, a very positive thing for uptown, uh, the whole landscape of that bottom block, um, the whole landscape of uptown, it's a, it's a positive economic impact to the city with uh, the creation of a new business. It's not a business that's coming from a different location, it's a brand new business on the first floor that's going to you know, pay income taxes. Their employees aren't going to come for 12 days and leave. I mean. They're going, to be, they're going to be Athens residents. They're going to pay income taxes. And then when you look at the appraised value of the building, it's going to, it's going to increase uh, substantially. And, uh, you know, there's a good portion of, or I don't know what the portion is, but I know there's a portion of the property taxes that's paid uh, to the city, and, and that will be uh, 
from here on out. So I just want to emphasize, you know, it is a visible thing, but there is no, uh, you know, defiance or, you know, we're just going to go ahead and do what we want because that hasn't been our motto the whole time. I mean, the whole time we've reached out since last October, we've reached out to city officials. We've, we've come numerous times to city council. And certainly if there was um, any possibility that I believe if I would have said, hey, uh, we need a state inspection for a May occupancy, I would have helped speed up the process. I would I certainly would have done so, but I, I guess uh, that might have been my mistake. But uh, no act of defiance. We're, we're waiting around for a couple more weeks, and see you then. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. I guess I would just share with Council that uh, Co-Director Paskey did inform us that, of the action being taken at the time that it was taken, and acknowledged at that time that they fully understood that if this is not approved, that it would have to then be removed or, re, you know, set back against that. So, but in order to get their state inspection, you cannot have what was out there for all these months was just a protrusion with no um, containment. So, I'm just saying we were aware. And I believe, as he indicated, he was aware of the risk he was taking with that action. And, and may I ask, um, just procedurally, the state inspection had to happen now? I can't say the Division of Industrial Compliance can show up at your site at any time. I, 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 he could speak to what the findings were from there. That would help. So we have it. Okay. So obviously, we're trying to run a business. And um, part of our business model there are having residents on the uh, second and third floor. And uh, those leases uh, began this month, and uh, we could, um, you know, we've had the whole place ready for a state inspection for at least a month now, and this is a, uh, this, the balcony last month, it was a month with a fifth Monday. I mean, it's just every <laughs> hurdle, you know, every roadblock. We've had it, and we would love to get some resolution to it. And, uh, you know, we tried last time to try to come to a compromise. I mean, I, four feet is, you know, whatever. I, don't, I just want something that's obviously uh, bigger than 18 inches. That, a lady at the messenger asked me, um, is that three feet? And it doesn't look like three feet. And, I, and it's three feet, and that's been my whole thing from the beginning. Like, when you spread it out width-wise, you know, 18 inches is going to look like six. And I've had, you know, I'm sure since it's so visible and there are some uh, opponents, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard from every single one um, because they're, they have more of an emotional uh, tie to it. Uh, you know, some, it's just human nature. It's nat natural human uh, behavior. If you're in disagreement with something, you're more likely to be vocal. I've had numerous people come up to me and say, hey, that looks great, you know? I mean, the last two weeks looks fabulous. I mean, people are stopping me on the street, they're stopping me at Lowe's, wherever, saying it looks fabulous. So, um, you know, I would argue that, you know, there's, and they're, and they're not emotionally tied to it. I mean, so they're not more, they're not as, you know, apt to speak up. And um, so I would argue that there's uh, the vast majority of the public, uh, no, either doesn't care or, or, or thinks it looks good. Mr. Wharton, so Ms. Nisley's question. Yeah, and so, yeah, the, the part of the business is, is we, had, uh, we have um, occupants uh, to reside in the uh, apartments this month. And so, you know, the state occupancy permit needed to be signed off on. And uh, if you would like, we can this, pull the, we can pull the railing May. into 18 inches until... You know, I mean, I can have it pulled into 18 inches and later in the week, you know, I mean, until we get some resolution. I just, we have to cut it back from the 11 feet that it was to some level, and we're optimistic that we can reach a compromise and have three feet. So we just, we just uh, elected to go ahead and do the finished product and hope that uh, we get it. And if we don't, 
make an alteration. So are there people occupying There's now? There's no one occupying There's right no now. one occupying now, but the leases did begin this month. They, they begin later this month. Yeah. Later this month. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Amending in any way or mm -hmm. changing it. We're going to have third reading in two weeks. Okay. We're going to move on to ordinances for first reading. Uh, quite a few of them. Ordinance 4513, an ordinance amending 01513, amending the 2013 appropriation ordinance. Number nine. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, request that we consider this ordinance under suspension of the rules. Second. And the purpose for the suspension being that uh, these costs are for the perfection um, improvements that are needing to take place um, immediately. Okay. <clears throat> Member Nisley um, has asked for suspension of the rules on Ordinance 4513. All those in favor of suspending the rules signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Member Nisley, the rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. I move adoption of Ordinance 4513. Second. Thank you. And the uh, purpose of this particular ordinance is for the appropriation of $7,645 additional dollars uh, for ballasts for the lighting uh, improvements at the community center, more specifically the pool lights and the uh, current equipment does not work with the new lights. So we need the additional money appropriated. All those in favor of, <coughs> excuse me, all those in favor of ordinance 4513 signify by saying aye. 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 There was a post in okay, The ordinance is suspended and adopted. Ordinance 4613, an ordinance amending 08312, authorizing the service safety director to enter into contract with Perfection Group, Inc. for energy saving lighting improvements to city facilities and declaring an emergency. Again, Member Nisley. Thank you, Mr. President. I request that we consider this ordinance under suspension of the rules. Second. Uh, the purpose being that this is then the, uh, the corollary uh, ordinance that um, approves the charges of the additional monies to the various departments in the city for the lighting improvements for perfection. Any questions or concerns about suspension? Okay. All those in favor of suspending the rules on Ordinance 4613 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Um, the, order, the rules are suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. I move adoption of Ordinance 4613. Second. And um, as discussed earlier in our uh, committee meeting, we do have um, additional monies that are needed to be appropriated to various departments within the city to pay for the um, ballasts so that the new lighting will work uh, at the pool at the community center. And the the ordinance in particular lists the, um, it's actually amending an earlier ordinance that we passed this year. And what it does is corrects the, um, the different departmental charges by the, the amount of that $7,645. All those in favor of ordinance 4513 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That was 46-13. What did I say? 45. I'm sorry, 46-13, yes. Um, ordinance 46-13. We all said aye. Yeah, yes. 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 I'm sorry. So that ordinance has been adopted. And we're going to move on to ordinance 47-13. An ordinance providing for the issuance of $250,000 of notes by the City of Athens, Ohio, in, in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying part of the cost of acquiring and constructing improvements to East State Street and declaring an emergency. Member 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this particular ordinance is, um, as described in the in the text, for paying down our um, construction improvements to East State Street. The remaining balance on this is five hundred thousand dollars, a payment, um, and it is due on June. The bonds are due June twenty seventh. So what we've typically done, or what we have done in the past on this particular one, is pay down two hundred and fifty thousand dollars at a time on what we owe, and so. Uh, this particular ordinance then will be for the issuance of bonds for the remaining $250,000. And I might note that uh, this is paid for, um, we pay down on this note with TIF money, the tax incremental financing that comes into the city each year um, in lieu of the property taxes. Um, and this has been the kind of financing that has been in effect for these East State Street improvements. This is First okay. Moving on to Ordinance 4813, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to submit an application for the COPS hiring grant program and declaring an emergency. Member Patterson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, again, this is a grant, uh, or this the application for this would allow for the city, if approved, um, to get a new police officer on force. It can be a new or a new hire. Um, or rehire, rather. Um, it's uh, a 75-25 split in terms of where the finances would come from, 75% from the J Department of Justice through the COPS hiring program, 25% uh, from the city. It's a three-year grant, and uh, there is a fourth year in which the city would, would incur the uh, cost of that particular hire. Does the mayor need, do we need to suspend that? May 21st? May 22nd, Second. yes. Is the deadline? We'll be cutting it pretty close to suspend rules next time. Your choice. I would, I would, I would like to have it suspended if possible. <laughs> so, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your call, though. So I, I would like to request that we consider this ordinance under suspension of the rules. Second. Thank you. So that we have plenty of time to, to complete the application. All those in favor of suspending the rules on Ordinance 4813, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The rules are suspended. Mr. Patterson. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Again, um, this would be uh, for the mayor to, authorizing the mayor to apply for this grant. Uh, there is also an emergency clause along with this to speed things along because it is a uh, May 22nd deadline on this application going forward. So therefore, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve Ordinance uh, 4813. Second. Okay. All those in favor of Ordinance 4813 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ordinance is adopted. We'll move on to Ordinance 4913, an ordinance authorizing construction and construction engineering of the Columbus Road, Lancaster Street, and Infrastructure Improvements Project number 269. Member Pappy. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I move that uh, we authorize, as we discussed earlier, the, uh, to make the bids for the construction and construction engineering of the Columbus Road Lancaster Street Infrastructure Improvements Project. Do you want to suspend? No. Mm -hmm. no. First reading. We, we, we did talk about it. We did talk quite about Quite a bit it. already. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Again, there will be an information session the 21st of May. So you'll have another meeting before then, but just so everybody's. In the loop and that's where. In where again? Um, I think it's at ACENET, right? 86 Columbus Road, Suite 103. No, I, I think it's in the Deddens building. What is it? The Deddens building. Deddens building, sorry. Suite 103, 86 Columbus Road. Thank you for correcting me. Okay, we will mention it again. Many times. <laughs> ordinance 5013, an ordinance granting use of the public right of way authorizing the service safety director to execute an electric line easement with the Ohio Power Company, AEP, 
for the wastewater treatment plant improvements and declaring an emergency. Member Fall. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I, I move that we suspend the rules <coughs> on 5013. Second. Um, this is because our um, need to expedite anything and everything having to do with the wastewater treatment plant. Not, not really, but it is important to keep it on track so that we don't incur overruns, and, which may in, increase prices. So. Okay. Um, all those in favor of uh, suspending suspending the rules on Ordinance 5013 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. I um, move that we adopt 5013. Second. Um, for the reasons that we discussed earlier in the committee, um, it's important to um, help to move the wastewater treatment plant um, improvements along. Okay. All those in favor of Ordinance 5013 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. This ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 5113, an ordinance amending <coughs> Ordinance 4113, authorizing the repair and rehabilitation of city water wells project number 275 and declaring an emergency. Member Butler. Thank you, Mr. President. As noted earlier in um, committee meeting, this uh, was acknowledged as a, something that needs to move forward. Um, by the uh, City Service Safety Director. Um, so at this moment, I would move that we suspend the rules for this ordinance. Second. Second. Any, any further? Okay. All those um, members in favor of suspending the rules on Ordinance 5113 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And I'm sorry, who seconded? You did. Okay, thank Chris. you. Yeah, Chris. All those. No, we, we voted right. Yeah. Just to, sus to suspend. Have suspend. We have to suspend at this point. Um, before you, you speak to this, it looks like there is possibly a typo um, in, in the amendment, unless I'm reading it incorrectly. Um, so for under Section 1, it says Section 2 of 04113 is hereby amended. Should that read Section 1? I have, I have 4113 you out here. Just bear with us for a moment. Oh, just yeah. have it out. Uh, section 1 of and 4113 says, Service State Director is here. I authorized to advertise except bids if necessary to enter into contracts, repair, rehabilitation of city wells, Project 275. Section 2 says, Service State Director is there authorized to expend up to $125,000. So it's correct. It is correct, I think, yeah. Because that is section. So it is referring to the right, correct section. No, that's for okay. going down to the next step. Okay. Oh, and the, the uh, transaction class got changed because it's a capital improvement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not a. We did. We, we, we suspended. We did. We did. Yeah, suspended. Okay. So the rules are suspended. Correct. Yeah, or mm -hmm. suspension. Thank you, Mr. President. So at this moment, I would um, move to adopt this ordinance, 5113. <laughs> Thank you. So briefly, um, we've discussed this in committee a number of times. We have an aging um, infrastructure. Specifically here, we're talking about our water wells. Um, as noted in an email from Andy Stone, Public Works Director, we have not drilled a new water well since 1983. We've had significant reduction in the capacity that these wells can produce, so this is an attempt to, to move forward and do good housekeeping. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of Ordinance 5113 signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same side. This ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 5213. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. 5213. Yes. Yeah. Got my suspension. Ordinance 5213 for the replacement. <coughs> that's not right. No. Go to the, an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to purchase materials for the replacement of water lines on Patton, Arden, and portions of Marietta Streets utilizing in house labor. 
Member Butler. Thank you, Mr. President. I believe that this, too, is being requested uh, a suspension. Is that correct? No? No, I'm not going to ask that of you anymore this evening. Thank okay. you for moving the critical. Okay, so it's not necessary. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I'll just briefly acknowledge that this particular ordinance is exactly as it states to improve and replace these uh, water lines for Patton, Arden, portions of Marietta Street. Thank you. So I, I would like to ask a question. Is that paving included, or is it just paving where you're replacing the line? Which is pretty much going to be the streets. Okay. So yes. So those has will a be three component. streets that are paved. probably paved. They were included in the... Um, the paving. Paving. Yes, thank you. The 2013 paving schedule. Yeah, they're on our street paving mm -hmm. list for this year. Again, the idea is to do the war lines before you pave it. Very good. So, <laughs> oh, we could do it the other way around, but you just have to do it twice. Very good. I just wanted to remind everyone out there that this is a plan. Oh, okay. Yes. And if the city engineer comes back saying, "Boy, I need these now," I'll let you know okay, in advance by next week at the committee meeting. So. Ordinance 5313, an ordinance authorizing street paving and repairs, project number 276, member Gosling. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this ordinance provides the funds for our annual uh, street paving and rehabilitation uh, that we do every summer in the city. Uh, this year, it has been proposed to allocate uh, $375,000 for these tasks, which is more than it is in some years. It's a little bit less than it was this past year, um, and for that reason, we will. I contacted the um, city engineer during the meeting, actually by email, and asked him if, if we could get together and talk about if it's possible to increase this to last year's levels, or if there are too many uh, other needs from the streets uh, street budget this year. So it's possible we could see a, an amendment to this, but not guaranteed by any means. Ordinance 5430. An ordinance closing a court. An ordinance closing a portion of Court Union, Washington, and State Streets on Saturday, June, July 20th, to 1 a.m. on Sunday, July 21st, 2013, 2013, for Boogie on the Bricks, a family music and arts festival. Member guys. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is to uh, allow. Um, the, the city to set up and manage the uh, Boogie on the Bricks uh, family music event that we have every year. It's one of the most anticipated uh, that we have, and I, I see most people that I know in the city at this event each year. I'm going to speak to uh, five ordinances, 54 through 58, which all address uh, this one event, the Boogie on the Bricks event, which is scheduled for uh, July 20th uh, this year. The first one is simply to close the street. Ordinance 5513 will allow free parking, as we're doing for Ohio Brew Week, uh, in the city parking garage during the event. Uh, the third one, Ordinance 5613, establishes a glass-free drinking zone to, uh, to make it a, a safe, more safe event for the people that attend it. Uh, Ordinance 57. 13 regulates vending so that we can have people selling uh, food and, and perhaps t-shirts and other items during this. And then the last one, 5813, uh, simply addresses the city noise ordinance for this event to make sure that it's exempted from our regulations. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and just, for the record, and read these. Um, ordinance 5513. Ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code, Title 7, Section 7.05.26B1, City Garage Metered Parking Rates and Regulations on Saturday, July 20th, to 1 a.m. Sunday, July 21st, 2013, for Boogie on the Bricks, a Family Music and Arts Festival. Ordinance 5613, an ordinance establishing a glass-free drinking container zone during a Boogie on the Bricks Family Music and Arts Festival 
on Saturday, July 20th to uh, 1 a.m. Sunday, July 21st, 2013. Ordinance 5713, an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code Chapter 11.04, vending, peddling, and soliciting to allow vending in a designated area on July 20th and 21st, 2013, during the Boogie on the Bricks Family Music and Arts Festival. And Ordinance 5813, an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code, Section 13.04.10, Unnecessary Noise, in the downtown area on July 21st, 2012, for Boogie on the Bricks, a Family Music and Arts Festival. <coughs> We're going to move on to our last um, bit of legislation, uh, Resolution 0613, a resolution supporting res legislation to enact a statewide ban on underground injection wells, the disposal method for toxic liquid waste resulting from hydraulic fracture. Introduced by all council members, but Who's going to speak? Member Pappy? I can speak again. So um, I'll read the resolution. Introduced by all members of council, a resolution supporting legislation to enact a statewide ban on underground injection wells, the disposal, disposal method for toxic liquid waste resulting from hydraulic fracturing, whereas liquid, liquid waste from fracking is a varying mix of fracking fluid and other toxic fluids that would otherwise have remained trapped deep underground well below freshwater aquifers and whereas this liquid waste brings to the surface potentially extreme levels of harmful contaminants including arsenic, lead, hexavalent, uh, chromium, <laughs> barium, uh, stronium, benzene, polycyclic, aromatic, hydrocarbons, tooling, xylene, corrosive salts and radioactive materials such as radium-226. And reports from the U.S. Geological Survey showed that waste imported to Ohio for disposal from Pennsylvania indeed contained radium-226. And whereas it is well known that many of the chemicals used to make fracking fluid and that return to the surface in the liquid waste from fracking are far from safe. Nephthalene, benzene, and acryl I don't know, acrylamide are acrylamide. just a, a, how do you say that? Acrylamide. Acrylamide are just a few of the known or suspected carcinogens identified as included in many fracking fluids. And whereas recent sampling results from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources found alarming levels of environmental toxins at class two injection well sites in Ohio, including high levels of benzene and known carcinogen. And whereas operators do not always have to report the chemicals they are injecting underground as a consequence, the full extent of the public health threat from fracking waste remains unknown. <coughs> and whereas, under the Safe Drinking Water Act, the US EPA established an underground injection control program for permitting the disposal of toxic waste by injecting them underground into designated wells. These wells are now a primary means of disposing of fracking waste. And whereas the disposal of toxic drilling and fracking waste is likely to become a long-term problem for Ohioans, far outweighing any short-term e economic gains to our state from serving as a dumping ground for this waste. And whereas injecting, injecting fracking wastewater deep underground in order to dispose of it has also caused small earthquakes and the recently enacted rules for the prevention of seismic activity surrounding class two injection wells are inadequate. And whereas the only course of action that would prevent future earthquakes like those experienced in Youngstown, Ohio, is to halt all underground injection of waste resulting from the hydraulic fracturing process. And whereas allowing Ohio to become a dump ground for the waste resulting from hydraulic fracturing will leave a toxic legacy for generations of Ohio, Ohioans. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Athens, Ohio, Section 1, this Council urges its state legislators to protect Ohioans from the flood of oil and gas industry waste. Section 2, the Council supports Representatives Dryhouse and R. Hagen and Senator Skindell's sponsorship of legislation to enact a statewide ban on the risky disposal methods for the liquid waste resulting from hydraulic fracturing. 
Section 3, this resolution shall be in full force and effect at the earliest moment permitted by law upon its passage and approval by the mayor. I just want to say that I'm in full support of this resolution uh, for a number of reasons. As I understand it, most of the injection wells, number one, aren't as deep as what we've heard about with a lot of the hydraulic fracturing wells, which are, you know, are, are very deep, but these aren't as deep. And number two, as I understand it, the regulation of these particular wells is fairly lax in terms of uh, inspections. Inspections are every five years and a 30-minute pressure hold to, to satisfy um, the safety of these particular wells. So I think this is a huge concern. Uh, this has always been a concern that has been more relevant to me knowing that there's a large number of existing wells throughout the Athens County, without throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, and these old wells can easily be converted into um, into injection wells to bring other states uh, to include our own waste into southeastern Ohio and become a dumping ground. Um, so therefore, I'm completely and totally in support of this resolution moving forward. Other comments? Mayor? This is the one reading the resolution? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. It is. No. I'd, I'd like to point out that several of our neighbors have bans on injection ejecting fracking waste and we People are being on your street neighbors neighboring states, states. states. Oh, okay, states. so sorry um no my next door neighbor does it. but the uh, you know this is a concern because um if other states are not taking care of their own waste then we are becoming a dumping ground and this reminds me of what happens to third world countries is that you know all the toxic waste goes there because they have lax um, regulations and the people who are there end up paying the long-term legacy prices for all this sort of industrial profit-making um, and uh, activity that's going on in other places where they're getting the profit or the monetary gain and we are paying the long-term price Just to add one other comment, the, currently the EPA is trying to decide whether or not to allow barging on the Ohio River of this waste from these other states who don't allow this waste. And so uh, there's a port uh, near in Washington County on, that is poised to begin to accept that waste to then truck into our, uh, our injection wells. So this, this is a huge issue, and um, I think the more that we speak out about it, the better we are in terms of getting um, the people higher up to, to listen to our concerns. But currently, the EPA is trying to decide whether or not to rule. And any of those uh, municipalities along the Ohio River that get their water from the Ohio River, river and filter it, you know, filter it into their water systems are at risk if there is a... A, a, a spill so um, yeah when that would occur so again uh, we're all in this together folks and uh, those of us who speak out the loudest um, we just need to keep doing that okay, so again this is a one reading resolution um, so all those council members in favor uh, I'm sorry a second. I need a second second you did second okay thank you um, all those council members in favor of um, approving this resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The resolution is adopted. Uh, moving on to announcements and other business. Did I hear somebody at that table say there was a bridge out somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Oxbow on Richland. <laughs> Just one? Mm -hmm. um, seriously. Um, <laughs> Detours are Schaefer Street, Richland Schaefer Union, back up town. Signs up. Every signs should be up. Signs, Flash. barricades Barricade should be there. Yeah. Okay, barricades are up. I am told they are. Right. Hey, we did not complete the full uh, installation of the fencing today, so they're going to be working on that the next two days. And do we have a notice as you come in off of the, the VMS sign was lit up this morning? Message mm -hmm. sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remind everybody that tomorrow, Tuesday, is election day in our 
Fair City. Uh, the places will be voting on. We have the opportunity to vote on uh, representatives for Athens to Athens City Council. Um, and um, that's essentially all that's going on. Committee meetings? Treasurer. I think the treasurer's on there, but. Yeah, yeah, the president is on there too, but, yeah. you know, it, it's the contest, contested races that we're interested in. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Takes committee meetings. No, yeah. Probably finance and personnel, I yeah. suspect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, with the um, just reminding everybody um, polls open. 630. 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. Until 7.30. 7.30 at night. So you've got plenty of time. Um, it's not going to be crowded, so please, <laughs> everybody in this room and everybody who's watching us, um, if you're eligible, please go vote. Mm -hmm. Bring some reading material for the poll wa workers. They're probably going to be real bored. Yeah, take some magazines <laughs> to your favorite Jeez, poll. Or something. Okay. Um, and uh, other business... Uh, we do need some committee meetings for next week. Um, we will have finance and personnel. Uh, Maybe. Maybe. I'll let you know. Okay. okay. Um, public public you know. safety, service safety. I'm being informed. Okay. So we have several already scheduled, and we know that um, Debbie Walker will take all comers all week long. Yeah, I do want a meeting. Yes, Please. we do have a meeting. Oh, we do? For planning and development, yes. Okay. Um, now we have an opportunity for citizens in the room to speak on legislative items and city services that have not been covered on the agenda. Anybody? Okay, we are going to adjourn this meeting. 13.